Ichibe Hyosabe holds the title of the monk who calls the name, and we identify him as the leader of the Zero Division. The one in charge of arguably the most hyped and most powerful group within Bleach has many sides to his character. Looking through his jolly and oversized personality, there is a sinister side, one that we get hints of within the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and we learn more about within the Can't Feel Your Own Word light novels. In this video, I'm going to be talking about every aspect of Ichibe's character. Although he doesn't appear much within the manga, I want to dissect all of his appearances, including his battle with Yuhabak, and the comments that he makes to Ichigo and the others after he is defeated, as well as the reveals that we get about Ichibe within Can't Feel Your Own World. So join me as I break down and analyse the High Priest Ichibe. Before the video begins, only 12% of the people who watch my content are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe and stick around for more content just like this. Now let's get back to the topic of the video. Ichibe makes his debut appearance within the final arc of the Bleach manga in chapter 516. Through his character design, he may not strike you as being one of the most powerful Shinigami or the individual who had chosen all of the names for everything within the Soul Society, including the names of Zanpakuto, Shikai, and even Bankai, while being oversized, bald-headed, and donning a really long black beard, the most striking feature of his appearance are his red eyes. He wears a standard black Shinigami Shihakusho under his white, long-sleeved Zero Division coat, and around his neck he has a set of very large red prayer beads, which helps us with identifying him as a monk, and these prayer beads are pretty similar to those that Akuma wears within Street Fighter. While initially we perceive him to be this big jolly character, who is constantly smiling and remains positive, our perception of him is quickly shifted when we see him battle Yuhobak, we then get to appreciate how sinister his smiling really is. Like I have mentioned, he maintains a very lively expression on his face, but Ichibe is not to be messed about with. He fully carries out the responsibility that has been handed down to him as the leader of the Zero Division, and he does not compromise on his authority as a Shinigami who has been tasked with protecting the Soul King. Like a lot of the characters within Bleach, he does not mix his words, and he is very upfront with what he thinks. Ichibe constantly smiles throughout his battles, which is evident an intimidation tactic. Yuhobak even comments upon this in chapter 606, when after Ichibe had resolved to kill Yuhobak, he says that Ichibe appears to have become happier now that he has resolved to kill him. During his battle against Yuhobak, Ichibe condescendingly cuts Yuhobak's power in half, as he does not want to completely humiliate him by tarnishing his reputation with his underlings, if he were to have defeated him at his full power, which Ichibe is pretty confident that he could do. The Soul King had bestowed upon Ichibe a powerful title, as he is referred to as the monk who calls the real name, and like I have explained, he is the one who had named everything within the Soul Society. With him being the leader of the Zero Division, he was actually the very first Shinigami who had evolved his Zanpakuto into its second release state. He had achieved this even before he had named the second release of his Zanpakuto Bankai. Ichibe refers to the evolved form of his Zanpakuto as Shinuchi. He makes his debut appearance after the Soul Society is completely destroyed by the Quincy. Following the death of Head Captain Yamamoto, he along with the other members of the Royal Guard, travel to the Soul Society and speak with the Gotei 13. When Shunsui questions why they are here, Ichibe states that they have arrived following orders from the Soul King. They have come to rebuild the Gotei 13. But before this, he states that Ichigo needs to be taken to the Soul King's palace. Senjumaru then appears with orbs containing several injured Shinigami, as well as an orb that contains Ichigo's broken Bankai. When Ichigo questions why they are taking him to the Soul King's palace, Ichibe states that they are taking him for a different reason. He says this with a very stern expression on his face, and this reason is only revealed within the first volume of Can't Feel Your Own World, which I'll talk about shortly. Ichigo agrees to go with them after Ichibe reveals that while his Zanpakuto cannot be completely fixed, it can be restored to something that was similar to its original form. By using Kukakushiba's cannon, Ichibe and the others make their way back to the royal palace. After arriving, he tells Ichigo that he should be proud of himself, that it's not every day that an ordinary Shinigami is allowed here, but Ichibe then corrects himself as he states that he is not sure if he can call him an ordinary Shinigami. When Ichigo questions that he thought that they needed an Oken to enter into the royal palace, Ichibe states that upon entering into the Zero Division, their bones were altered by the Soul King, meaning that the key to enter into the royal palace is literally the bones of the Zero Division. He states that there are two ways to enter into the royal palace. The first is that they are let in by choice, or the second is that they come with the Zero Division. Aizen on the other hand had tried to create his own Oken 
Gohan. So in other words, he had tried creating the Zero Division by using his own spiritual powers. We see Ichibei again in chapter 545 when he comments on Rukia and Renji's progress. He states that they are doing very well with their training, as he then asks if the two of them will want to train with him in his inner room. We learn in chapter 564 that during their training, Ichibei had told Renji that he only knows a portion of his Bankai's real name, and the fact that his Zanbakdo had only taught him half of its name indicates that it only partly acknowledges him. It was difficult for Ichibei to tell this to Renji, especially after how long Renji had fought alongside with his Zanbakdo. He offers to tell Renji the real name of his Bankai, as he reveals that he was given an ability by the Soul King as the monk who speaks the true name. We learn that he had actually come up with the name Zanbakdo, and that every Shikai and Bankai Ichibei was responsible for naming. And in addition to this, all of the countless phenomena that occur within the Soul Society, it was Ichibei who had named them. He is aware of all of the names of every Zanbakdo from the moment an Asuchi is formed by Owetsu Nimaya, and this Asuchi is handed to a Shinigami, thus explaining how he was able to tell Renji the real name of his Bankai. After Ichigo's training is complete, we see Ichibei again in chapter 555. He tells Ichigo that he doesn't have to worry whether if he will make it in time or not for the battle against the Quincy, since they have already started attacking the Soul Society about three hours ago, thus prompting Ichigo to immediately rush down to the Serite. When Hikifune comments that Ichigo has gotten so strong, Ichibei states that it's not that he has gotten stronger, it's the fact that he has grown. Ichigo is stronger in body and spirit, as Ichibei states that he has now become a true Shinigami. In chapter 588, Ichibei senses that Uryu, Hashwat, and Yuhabak have arrived at the Soul King's palace. Upon their arrival, Ichibei uses his powers to hide the royal palace from the Quincy. Yuhabak wastes little time by confronting Ichibei, as he calls Ichibei by his name and asks whether if he is going to let him pass or not. But Ichibei tells Yuhabak not to speak his name so lightly, that is, if he doesn't want to lose his voice. Thus beginning the battle between Ichibei and Yuhabak, where we get to see Ichibei utilize his full power. And similar to Head Captain Yamamoto, as the leader of the Zero Division, it was very rewarding as we got to see him unleash his full power, and the true extent of his Bankai abilities. Throughout this battle, Ichibei was very confident, and he maintained that sinister smile on his face. For the majority of this battle, Yuhabak was utterly overwhelmed, and it's not an understatement to say that he was beneath Ichibei's feet, as even I had assumed that Ichibei had easily won their encounter. But unfortunately, the tables were turned after Yuhabak had revealed his ability the Almighty, a power that can overcome any other ability. Now this doesn't mean that Ichibei's powers are to be taken lightly. In terms of his Shikai, it is released when he says the command painted black. His Zanbakdo transforms as the brush turns into a short tipped blade, while in his Shikai, Ichibei swings his Zanbakdo Ichimonji as it releases ink, and anything that this ink covers loses its name and its powers. Because Ichibei's power derives from the colour black, every time Ichibei releases Ichimonji, all of the colour black from all beings, whether if they are dead or alive, become his power. Ichibei's Bankai Shirafude Ichimonji perfectly complements his Shikai, and it actually relies upon the abilities of his Shikai, which some would say is a weakness of his Bankai. Upon activating his Bankai with the command Shin Uchi, Ichibei is able to change the name of any one of his opponents as long as they have been hit by the ink of his Shikai. Shirafude Ichimonji utilizes a white ink, and by writing on the bodies of its targets, he is able to change their names, thus bestowing upon his target the properties and powers of the name that he has granted. An example of this is when he changes Yuhabak's name to a black ant, thus giving him all of the power and strength of an ordinary ant. And like I had mentioned, the only way that Yuhabak was able to overcome this ability was via his own broken The Almighty power. In chapter 610, after Yuhabak states that he is no longer nameless and powerless, he destroys Ichibei's body from the inside out by blowing up his torso. Ichibei's dismembered head falls to the ground as he loses his battle against Yuhabak. After Ichigo and the others arrive at the royal palace, Ichibei calls out to Ichigo. He tells him to call out his name. After saying Ichibei's full name, he reveals that all power dwells within names. A thanks to Ichigo saying his name, he had received a small portion of Ichigo's powers which had helped him to heal himself. It is here in chapter 611 that Ichibei tells Ichigo that he needs him to stop Yuhobak. The fate of reality is in his hands now that the Zero Division has fallen. Despite the fact that Ichibei has regained his body, it'll be too late by the time that his strength returns. He cannot think of anybody else who has the power to stop Yuhobak right now. He is not asking Ichigo to kill him, but rather just to stop him. The Soul King is the key to the world, he states. And 
if the Soul King dies, the Serite, the world of the living, Hueco Mundo, all of reality will collapse in on itself and disappear. He apologizes to Ichigo for handing him over such a heavy task, but the fate of reality is now in his hands. In chapter 612, after Yuhobak impales the Soul King, we see Ichibei speaking to himself as he apologizes to Ichigo and his friends, as he reveals that they have no chance of defeating Yuhobak. Now this is very strange of him to say, especially after he had encouraged Ichigo and the others to go and face Yuhobak. This is the darker side to his character being revealed here, as he was completely aware that they had no chance of defeating him, but was still okay with them challenging Yuhobak, even if it meant that they would die. He then says to himself that Ichigo and the others have nothing to fear, because this is what peace is all about, as he then refers to Yuhobak saying, isn't that right? It is because of moments like this that Ichibei's character is disliked by a lot of fans of the series, including myself. Despite being the most highly regarded and powerful Shinigami, through his actions we cannot help but to think very lowly of him. He is somebody who places the interests of the Soul King above everything else, and it is because of his devotion to this mission that he can come across as being very evil and not forthcoming with his true motives and objectives. Now my opinion of Ichibei had changed after his final appearance within the story, when he had apologized to Ichigo and the others, knowing full well that they had no hope of defeating Yuhobak. It is like he had accepted that Yuhobak was going to kill the Soul King and that nobody could do anything about it. Maybe this was a part of his ego speaking. If Ichibei, the leader of the Zero Division, was unable to stop Yuhobak, then what chance does Ichigo have of stopping him? We learn more about Ichibei's true motives and the reason why he had wanted to take Ichigo into the Royal Palace within the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels. It is here where we learn that Ichibei had actually wanted to kill Ichigo and to cut up his body and to use his partially conscious corpse as the new Soul King. And this is the reason why he had trained Ichigo in the first place. I'm sure that this would have happened if Ichigo didn't end up killing Yuhobak. After the end of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Ichibei had actually used the partially conscious corpse of Yuhobak and turned him into the next Soul King. Despite how sinister and evil his plans were for Ichigo, he doesn't regret that he had them. During a conversation between Shunsui and Ichibei, as they discuss the nature of the current Soul King, Shunsui states that he is relieved that Ichigo didn't need to be cut down, but Ichibei states that Ichigo got lucky, as he didn't expect him to defeat or survive his battle against Yuhobak. In Volume 3 of Can't Fear Your Own World, we learn more about Ichibei's past and motives. During this final installment of this novel, he explains the true history of the world, as he states that originally reality was in chaos, there was neither life or death, progression and regression were taking place at the same time, and it had taken 100 million years for the world to even stabilize. Eventually, hollows had emerged in the world and had started to eat human inhabitants, thus disrupting the balance of circulating souls. This had eventually given birth to the first Menos Grande. Due to the disruption of hollows, the world had stagnated until a new being had emerged called the Soul King. This transcended being had ended up destroying the Menos. Ichibei had admitted that at the time other special beings like himself had also emerged, but there was nobody who was on the level of the Soul King. This helps us to understand that Ichibei's existence predates the Royal Palace and the Soul Society. He was alive alongside the original Soul King in his form prior to him becoming a linchpin. The Soul King had continued to destroy Hollows to protect the world, but it had caused the world to regress back towards chaos. In response to this, five powerful beings from that time had worked together in order to restore the world. We learned that these five individuals were the ancestors of the five great noble families. Ichibei states that he worked alongside them to split reality into three separate worlds. In order to do so, they needed the power of a transcended being, and it is for this reason that they had captured and sealed the Soul King in a crystal. Ichibei was a witness to the Soul King's powers being used to create the separate concepts of life and death, and the three separate worlds, and this was the start of the Cycle of Souls. The Cycle of Souls is the balance of souls in the human world and the Soul Society, and this is maintained by the Shinigami who kill hollows who disrupt this balance. Ichibei states that he is unsure as to why the Soul King had cooperated with them. He speculates that it was because he had foresaw the future and had seen that agreeing with the ancestors of the noble families was the best option to take. But like I said, this is mere speculation, as Ichibei goes on to describe how one of the ancestors from the Sunayashiro noble family had mutilated the body of the Soul King, removing his limbs and organs, thus resulting in the Soul King that we know of today. Ichibei is convinced that the Soul King had chosen to live this life as a linchpin, but it is hard to say. Who would want to be mutilated and put on display as a false ruler? It can be said that it is Ichibei who is the true ruler, as he speaks for the Soul King and is the one who is maintaining this lie. From what we know, he is the only surviving person who is aware of the true history of the world, how it was built upon a crime that was worse than murder. Ichibei 
had lied to everybody and had supported the five great noble families in the capture and mutilation of the Soul King. If anything, he is a false leader who has shown his loyalty to the ancestors of the five great noble families. He is far from being a noble soldier of the Soul King. Ichibe never truly obeyed the Soul King, and he is responsible for a millennia of lies that the Soul Society and reality are built upon. While Ichibe plays a key role within the story, and he fulfills his purpose as the leader of the Zero Division, the information that we learn about him from Can't Fear Your Own World helps us to see a completely different side to his character, as he becomes a key figure in the history of the Soul Society. He has some of the most broken powers and abilities within all of Bleach, and just because he was defeated by Yuhobak doesn't mean that a Shikai or Bankai is to be underestimated. They had a truly incredible battle, one that I'm really looking forward to seeing animated. Now while within the manga we didn't know much about his true motives, thanks to the novels we get to understand more about him, and it's for this reason that I'd started to explain a lot of the goings on within Can't Fear Your Own World, as I believe that it helps us to understand more about Ichibe, and I wouldn't have been able to do justice to his character analysis if I didn't mention these key points. If you enjoyed me diving into novel exclusive material, then definitely let me know. And if you enjoyed my character analysis on Ichibe, and if you learned something new, then definitely continue the discussion in the comments. I would love to read all of your thoughts and opinions on the monk who calls the real name, Ichibe Hyosube. So yeah, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach character analysis video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.